Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Health Psychology. Today, we're going to explore psychoneuroimmunology, PNI. This is a fascinating field that intertwines the mind, the nervous system, and the immune system in truly powerful ways. Today, we're going to develop, delve into the complex world of cancer and HIV AIDS, all through the lens of this incredible science. So sit tight and let's embark on this educational journey together. Let's start by exploring an amazing field that combines three major areas of science, psychology, neurology, and immunology. Buckle up, because we're about to dive into the fascinating world of psychoneuroimmunology. I know it's a mouthful, so let's break it down. Psycho refers to the mind, of course. Neuro is all about the nervous system, and immunology is the study of the immune system. Put it all together and you've got a field of study that looks at how our mind, nervous system, and immune system interact. It's like a super cool three-in-one science smoothie. Mm -hmm. Yummy. So PNI for short, it's all about understanding how our thoughts and emotions can impact our brain and in turn, impact our immune system. Have you ever noticed that you tend to catch a cold when you're stressed or not sleeping well? That's PNI in action. It's like this. Our brain communicates with our immune system, and this communication can be influenced by psychological factors like stress, mood, and behavior. When we're stressed, our brain releases stress hormones that can mess with our immune system's ability to do its job effectively. So in a way, our mental state can have a direct impact on our physical health. But that's not all. PNI also studies the other side of the coin, how our immune system can communicate back to our brain and influence our mood and behavior. Ever felt wiped out or moody when you're sick? I know I have. That's your immune system sending signals to your brain. And here's the really exciting part. Understanding this mind-body connection can open up new ways to promote health and treat diseases. Imagine being able to boost your immune system just by managing your stress or improving your mood. Now that's what I call a mind over matter. So how does our immune system work? Well, our immune system has two main strategies for fighting off invaders. So specific and non-specific immunity. It's like having both a general security team and a specialized task force ready for action. Non-specific immunity is our body's first line of defense. This is like our security guards at the door checking everyone's ID. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. If you're not on the list, you're not going to get in. This includes things like our skin, which acts as a physical barrier and also certain types of white blood cells that attack any intruder they counter. It's a broad, all-purpose defense system that doesn't discriminate. But sometimes, our non-specific defenses can't handle everything. That's when a specific immune response kicks in. This is like our special ops team, trained to recognize and target specific threats. They're armed with impressive array of tools, like T-cells that can directly kill infected cells, and B-cells that produce antibodies and Y-shaped proteins that latch onto invaders and mark them for destruction. What's awesome is that these cells can remember past invaders and making the response even faster for the same germ that tries to attack again. Now, our immune system has another cool trick up its sleeve. It can be both natural and artificial. Natural immunity is what we're born with or would develop after we get sick. It's like gaining experience points in a video game. We level up our defenses each time we overcome an illness. Artificial immunity, on the other hand, is like a cheat code that we can use to level up faster. This is what happens when we get vaccines. They introduce a harmless piece of germ or its genetic blueprint into our bodies, tricking our immune system into thinking it's under attack. Our bodies then build up defenses without us actually getting sick. So next time we encounter the real deal, we are ready. So here are those four in kind, just so you can see what each example brings in each of those four quadrants. It's very important that you understand the differences between specific and non-specific immunity and what is artificial 
and natural in each case. Okay? It's very critical that we practice these kinds of daily activities so that we can remain healthier longer. However, when these four functions fail because of stress and other bodily harm, we end up having to face critical chronic disorders and diseases like cancer and HIV AIDS. Let's first talk about a topic that can affect us all, cancer. Here's something you might not know. Cancer isn't just one disease, but a family of over 100 related diseases, including carcinomas, sarcomas, lymphomas, and leukemias. The diversity and complexity of cancer are astonishing, with its occurrence varying depending on our gender, age, ethnicity, and race. Despite grim numbers, we've seen declines in new cancer cases, thanks to lifestyle changes, improved detection, and a reduction in smoking. Here are the breakdowns of what each of those kinds of cancers do and what part of the body they affect. Carcinomas affect different epithelial cells, so your skin, lungs, these kinds of things. Sarcomas affect your muscles, your bones, and the cartilage, so your musculoskeletal system. Lymphomas affect the lymphatic system, okay? And leukemias affect the blood. Most cancers you hear about typically fall into the carcinoma and the lymphomas, but of course, we do hear a lot about leukemias. You may be asking, what are some of the risk factors for cancer? Well, tobacco and alcohol use certainly top the list, but the leading factor is actually advancing age. Diet is another significant factor, with fatty foods and highly processed meats being major culprits. On the other hand, a diet rich in fruits, veggies, and whole grains can play a protective role against some cancers. Some cancers. Although some forms of cancer are inherited, most are actually caused by non-genetic factors like environmental conditions and infections. And here's where psychoneuroimmunology comes in. Research has shown that other fact psychological factors can impact our immune system ability to fight cells, cancer cells. This is the basis for the immune surveillance theory. Long story short, chronic stressors can cause global immunosuppression, leaving our bodies vulnerable to the spread of cancer cells. But here's the good news. When cancer does develop, its impact can nearly always be minimized through early detection and treatment. Many cancer patients find relief and support through alternative treatments and psychosocial interventions, which enhance knowledge, increase the perception of control, and offer, offer supportive social environments. Now let's shift gears to HIV and AIDS. AIDS, caused by the HIV virus, is a formidable adversary that attacks the immune system. This disease, which first emerged in the 1980s, has significantly impacted young men, particularly African American and Hispanic American men in the United States. HIV is a retrovirus that causes host cells to reproduce its DNA, gradually reducing immunocompetence and leaving victims vulnerable to opportunistic infections. Just as with cancer, psychosocial factors play a substantial role in the course of HIV infection and AIDS. Stress, negative emotions, and social isolation may accelerate the disease's progression by altering hormones and immune environments. The good news is that medical interventions have evolved significantly. We've shifted from treating opportunistic diseases that resulted from the effects of HIV to treating and controlling the virus itself. Many individuals living with chronic conditions like HIV report positive adjustment over time with cognitive, behavioral, and emotional responses playing a crucial role in health outcomes. Health psychologists are on the front lines in both primary and secondary prevention of these diseases. They counsel people about testing, help modify high-risk behaviors, and assist patients in, in coping and treatment regimens. In conclusion, 
While we've made significant strides in prevention and treatment, many barriers to prevention remain. However, by understanding the intricacies of psychoneuroimmunology, we can better address these challenges and help improve the lives of countless individuals worldwide. Stay safe, stay informed, and remember, knowledge is power. As we wrap up today's discussion, it's important to recognize the interplay of psychological, neuro, and immune factors as a powerful determinant of health. Understanding the interaction gives us the powerful tools to tackle diseases like cancer and AIDS. So keep learning, keep exploring. We'll see you in the next video.